Thank you so much for inviting um, me to come along today to give you a bit of a presentation about health literacy. Uh, in my position at the Clinical Excellence Commission, this has become part of my portfolio over the last six months. And it's been a very fast learning curve. There's so much about health literacy that I didn't know. Um, and I have worked as a nurse during my career and I'm quite surprised that um, there was a lot to teach me about health literacy. So in um, the Clinical Excellence Commission, we have a, a term called patient-based care. Now you've heard a lot about patient-centered care today. What we've done is just refocused the, um, the point of care, if you like. We know that in healthcare, the focus is on the patient. That's what we're there for. That's whom we're caring for. But what we want to make a point of is that it is everyone's responsibility. The patient needs to be in the center, of course, but you also need to include the families, the carers, their needs, their preferences. And it's not just the responsibility of the nurse at the coalface, it's the responsibility of everyone from the coalface right the way up to the chief executive and beyond. And we also need to have that interaction with the community as well. Now we have um, a challenge in patient-based care, which strangely enough is called the patient-based care challenge. Um, this, this is a challenge that's been put out to the local health districts to encourage um, them to look at um, different areas of patient-based care and to make a commitment, and it is voluntary, um, to undertaking some of these challenges to, um, to make sure that their, their um, organisation and their staff have a patient-based focus. Now, some of the things you could think about include um, organisation-wide training in patient-based care, which we always need to know a little bit more about what we're working with, communication skills and communication techniques which is very much um, at the core of health literacy really, is something that's important. Um, using feedback that we get from our community, that we get from our consumers, our patients, and making sure we use that information in a, a worthwhile way, that our community actually appreciates that we are using the information that they're providing to us. Oops, wrong one. And this one, this is um, providing patients, families and carers with meaningful information, which is incredibly important. We do have our own language in healthcare and um, we need to make sure that we're using the same language as the people that we're engaging with, we're working with and we're trying to partner with because that's really what our aim is. Just to remind everybody about our patients, what is it they really value? Patients actually value sometimes different things to what we believe they do. So we always need to be mindful that everyone has a different set of values and a different set of needs. And really some of them are quite basic. And if we, if we anticipate the needs, we can work better with that particular individual and personalize the care. Now, when we talk about health literacy, do you think it's a problem across the board? Yep, good, converted. If we look at um, a group, um, about 60%, um, they, they are pretty comfortable with health literacy, but there's a 40% that are not. So in this group of um, people, you will find that these people have, have issues and that's quite frightening across the board in New South Wales, and this was done as part of a survey a few years ago. We talk about a generic patient. Now, there really isn't such a generic patient. And in New South Wales, we have lots of other things that we have to consider as well. So 60% have limited health literacy. One in three residents were born overseas and one in four speak a language other than English at home. So there's an awful lot of barriers to be unable to communicate the message. Now, we had a, a federal meeting 
um, in November last year about health literacy, which involved a whole range of stakeholders. The Clinical Excellence Commission was uh, invited there, and it was really quite interesting to listen to everyone contributing across um, Australia. And these were the priority areas that were identified that needed to be worked on in order to start helping people to um, identify health literacy and work on different strategies to improve um, what what's happening there. Now, where's the little button for the... Um, red? Oh, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> this one's supporting and empowering consumers and having systems and support to engage consumers. Indeed, we've already heard that it's not so much engaging with people, it's, it's forming a partnership with, with um, the people that we're working with. Now, we can educate clinicians, we can educate healthcare providers, but we also need to support our consumers to be able to ask the right questions at the right time. So these are all very important. And we also identified across the board, there's a whole range of different standards. So how's anyone really meant to know what is the correct standard to apply when you're developing healthcare information or having a conversation with uh, a person about health literacy? Mentioning partnership again, it's, it's much better to have a partnership when you're going forward in, in health. If you've got a partnership with um, a patient, with a consumer, with a resident, whatever you wish to call that person, you're, you're working together on a, agreed outcomes and that makes it so much easier to, to get what you actually want at the end of the day. And it really is based on what that patient really wants, what their needs and preferences are and how best we can work with them to, to reach that point in time. So, what is health literacy? I had um, another hat on yes, uh, this week, um, a patient hat, and I was talking about flying in a very small plane, um, and uh, the nurse said, oh, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm giving a presentation, and she said, oh, what on? And I said, uh, on health literacy. And she turned around to me and she said, what's that? You know, and, and this is quite common across the board. Um, it doesn't matter who you are, you, you really don't always fully comprehend what health literacy is about and it really isn't simple, it's quite complex. There's lots of different areas of it. But that basically is what it's about. It is about your health, the information, your decisions and at the end there, feeling good about your health. You know, this is all part of health literacy. Um, and there's many, many ways we can work together to try and achieve better things for people um, and, and try and improve the overall situation. So health literacy really falls into these three areas. You've got literacy, like not being able to understand the information, the written information that you're presented. There's a big area of concern around numeracy, which involves medication safety. And I'll speak about that in a little while. And there's also wayfinding. You know, it is so complicated finding your way to a department in a big hospital or even a small hospital. Where do I need to go? You know, who do I need to talk to? Again, that same person I was speaking to this week, um, her elderly father is in hospital and uh, she needed to ask some questions about some of his treatment and she phoned up and asked if she could speak to someone. So the person on the phone came up with two titles which she'd never heard before and said, which one do you want to speak to? And she said, well, I really don't know. Who are these people? What do they mean to my father? You know, we, we put a lot of barriers in people's way to, to actually get to the point in time where they want to be. Now, when we're working in the area of health literacy, there's two areas that we can make an impact. Um, the first is on individual people, um, trying to improve their knowledge, their understanding, and assist them with their decision-making. The other one is environmental, by creating an environment 
that makes it easier for people to navigate their way through the system. Our system is so complex and it covers such a range of, of different settings, whether it be in the big city or in a rural setting, whether it's in a hospital or an NPS or community service. It, there, there's so many different ways of doing the same thing or trying to achieve the same outcome. So this is, is really, I like this personalising, humanising and demystifying. These three um, areas I think are really important when you're trying to build up that partnership with, with your community, with your consumers. And we've got so many different cultures, so many different individuals. It, it's always um, difficult, but it's not impossible. I've put this up here because sometimes we get some insight into what our problem is by looking at what people complain about. Now that's a very negative, a negative word, but it is a good means of actually identifying some of the um, areas. Now this comes from the um, Healthcare Complaints Commission, and um, this is what they break their complaints down into complaints against a particular professional, if you like, and also the type of complaint that they receive. Now, they, they don't have all of the complaints in New South Wales, for example. Um, you will see far more that are generated at the local area that are resolved at the local area, but these are the ones that they have dealt with. And pretty much the first couple of things here are either about treatment or about um, communication. So in both cases, you'll find that here, if you look at um, the top three categories, we can actually see that it's treatment, communication and professional conduct. Now, they're all based around levels of communication. Have we given that person the right information? Have they understood the information? So that's the treatment are often related to that. And then for communication, you get a breakdown of communication here. It's, it's people's attitudes sometimes. Maybe they're not willing to go that extra mile. Maybe they're not reassuring that individual. It's an inadequate explanation and so on. So we've got a lot of work to do on the way that we actually communicate with individuals. I don't know if you're familiar with this scenario but it is true to say that doctors do not always listen to their patients and their attention often is something like 23 seconds and then they start moving on to other things. So if you've got a patient in the consulting room that's you know, maybe feeling a bit worried or they may be feeling a bit crook, they don't always formulate what they need to ask, what they need to know. And the moment's gone. We need to be able to engage those two people to have a better conversation so that they get what they need to across to the doctor and the doctor is able to listen to what they have to say. There is a lot of work that's been done on, the, on that type of thing at the moment. You may have heard about it, I think, Ask Me Three, and uh, there's a few studies that have taken place trying to empower patients to think about asking an additional question so that they understand a bit better. Now, does anyone understand that? And you can read it, you really can. There you go, there's a I'm recruiting you all as health ambassadors, health literacy ambassadors. Brilliant. There you go. But that, that's sort of what people see sometimes, you know? Big words. They don't always understand what, what it means. It needs to be simple English. Well, well done, you all. I'm very impressed. Very. Must have been that Tai Chi, I think. Must have. Now, this is a, a typical entrance into a main hospital foyer. And you sort of think, wow, where am I meant to go? 
You know, there there is a whole policy that's been um, uh, done by the uh, health department on wayfinding, which is really comprehensive. It um, came out towards the end of last year, which has got lots of pictures in and lots of suggestions on ways that you can help guide people through your facility and, and how to make it less frightening for people. Now, this was a conference. It is a couple of years old now, but I think it still has a, a lot of relevance. We, we were lucky enough, um, the Clinical Excellence Commission, to have um, Dr. Rima Rudd um, over from the States, who is um, really highly regarded in relation to health literacy and communication. And she came over and um, presented to us. There was a range of presentations at that day, and it was some of the questions that came out at the end is, you know, what is your policy on health literacy? How are you assessing and breaking down the barriers for your patients? It's, it's not about us improving, it's about everyone working together to try and identify the issues and developing strategies to make it a lot easier for our patients. Now, one of the things that uh, Rima Rudd focused on was medication safety, because that is a big area where we could make a big difference if, if we approached it in a different way. And it is true, most people can't read and understand a medication label. And in fact, you know, if you tell someone, okay, you take this tablet three times a day, look what happens. This is um, from that conference. And indeed, you know, a person will say, yeah, I took a tablet before breakfast, one at breakfast, one after breakfast. I've taken three tablets a day. I'm really good. But of course, it's not good. <laughs> But that's sometimes how people will interpret. So there certainly needs to be more structure to the information that they're provided. And sometimes you must wonder whether or not it would be easy just to jot something down in writing for someone to take it away and, and review later, because we all forget. And you, you don't have to be old to forget. So this is one of the partnerships that's um, developed from that, um, which includes MPS Medi Medicine Wise, it, includes Sydney um, Uni as well, I think, as well as the Ministry and the CEC. And that's developing some strategies to try and improve the way medications are uh, prescribed and um, information provided to the people that are taking the medications. The other work that we're uh, involved in at the moment, which is, um, it's quite exciting actually, if you want to make a big change in a, um, a community or, um, you know, try and sort of support people learning, there are many different approaches you can take. And working with um, TAFE or even working um, in conjunction with some of the universities, it's, it's really good because you can focus on a broad range. Um, Carrie talked about engaging with other people other than health, and indeed that's what you need to do in some of these things. And there is a, a grant at the moment, there's a, a study taking place to test out um, a health literacy course that's been um, put into TAFE. And it's, um, it's a, um, a series of um, educational tools as well as um, trying to find out what people's level of literacy are and how it improves after interventions in a range of um, uh, TAFE courses. And as I say, it's about halfway through now, and they're trying to see if um, their skills have improved before, uh, since before the intervention and after the intervention. And that's really quite exciting because that's hitting a range of people um, in, you know, between 18 and 25, um, which is good. This one, there's been changes to the curriculum. And this is from the National Health and Physical Education curriculum and it's impacting on uh, really young people. And what they're doing is they're teaching them basic health literacy skills. They're teaching them how, how to look at information and how to absorb information, and also how to share that information with their family, like with their parents. So starting at a really early age, getting people used to that sort of thing. Because we live in such a technological age, we have to look at a number of different ways to um, impact and, and 
had that conversation with a range of people. One of the resources, the healthcare, um, the Clinical Excellence Commission has is the Health Literacy Guide. And this is actually on our um, website. Um, it's, um, it really is a very comprehensive tool, which is available for people to um, look at and link into. And it, it contains a range of tools that can help people to determine um, how they do gap analysis, for example, how they can determine um, what's happening in their particular area, what sort of strategies they can use uh, to develop um, some programs or a framework. There's one on wayfinding. I think there's also um, um, a couple of uh, links to um, sites that will actually look at your patient information and will tell you how readable it is or how readable it is not, more, more to the point at times. So that's a good resource. The other one we have is information to consumers about some of the issues in health that have been identified as, as being important. They've changed over a couple of years, but it's just simple factual information that um, you can look at to, to determine what's happening. Can you see that all right, or is it my, is it too blurred or? Okay, I, my, I'm blurred anyway, so it's, <laughs> it's hard. But it, it's um, on things like blood, blood watch, hand hygiene, um, those sorts of issues, and just giving some factual information about it so people are aware what's happening. Can also be linked into local health districts for local health districts to put some of their, um, their findings, some of their stats in, so that you can see what's been happening from a local perspective. Now, I'd just like to show you a partnership the CEC has with one of the local health districts. There's a range of health districts that are doing lots of good work in health literacy. We partnered with one of these to showcase their particular approach to um, developing um, a health literacy within their organisation. And it's actually Illawarra Shoalhaven uh, local health district who've actually developed a range of things and on this um, this uh, presentation I've put the link to to their um, to additional um, items that you can have a look at they develop a framework they've developed um, simple English um, brochure printing guide they've got policies set up They've got um, a developed a health ambassador program, um, which is uh, they've trained people up in the skills of health literacy. And these people are located in every facility to champion health literacy and also to facilitate other members of staff when they're um, developing patient information or developing policies, making sure that there's always consumer input to a lot of these um, policies and processes. And this is a particularly comprehensive one. And Illawarra Shoalhaven are more than happy to share uh, their resources with any other local health district that wants to utilise what they've done. They also have undertaken to look at every single piece of patient information and make sure that every single piece conforms to um, to that particular standard. Um, that when they counted, they had something like 6,000 different publications. So I think they'll be doing that for a, a couple of years somehow. It's quite a heavy body of work, but they've started and they've developed a, a portal online uh, in the intranet that they can actually log everything so that people can actually put their new pieces of patient information up there and also log it that it has been reviewed by a consumer and will be, you know, uh, approved by the local health district. So they've got a comprehensive list of every bit, or they will have very soon, of every bit of patient information that is available within their local health district. And that's really a remarkable achievement, I think. So that's one way that people can, can do things. The other thing with working um, in developing frameworks, um, we have at the CEC a consumer advisory group. And if any of our programs within the CEC are developing patient information 
we always um, send out a draft to them first for their comments um, and ask them, you know, what are the key messages out of this? Is it readable? Is it understandable? Is the layout okay? Um, is there any more information required? Is it too much information? And then we get this back and we feed that back to the program so that they can adjust what, um, what that piece of information then contains. And you've got to gear it for your particular area because we found every district, obviously, has a different um, has different needs, has different requirements. So one size doesn't fit all, but if you apply standards across the board, you should be able to have that wider conversation with a range of people. Now, some of the the drivers for this, of course, are standard two of the health standards, the um, national health standards. And in fact, standard number two is one of the hardest standards that the health districts have found to demonstrate they comply with it. Now, working with your, um, with your community, developing strategies to look at health literacy and, and work with people to get beyond any barriers is a very clear way to demonstrate compliance with that. You're involving your consumers, you're, you're working with them in partnership, and that's really, really important. And those standards are also applied across the board in, um, in the community with, um, with the standards that apply in the community too. Here's a, another thing that um, draws on a lot of these principles. It's, I don't know if you've heard of the REACH program. It's, um, in some cases, when it first came out, it was quite controversial. It comes from the States um, and it actually gives um, the right of, of patients and their families to call for help if they're not happy with the condition of that individual. It puts in place a very clear, defined process for that person to go down to summon help. And it's, I think it demonstrates, um, it demonstrates that it's a clear, understandable process by the fact that it's not been overused, it's been understood. We have something like 50 hospitals in New South Wales now that have gone live with it. And we really, most hospitals, one or two calls in a year, you know, so people don't abuse it. They, they are asked if they can talk to the, uh, to the staff on the ward, just draw their attention, something's not right with Dan, you know, I don't know what's happening today, but something's not right with him. Can someone have a look? If they don't feel that um, that has been addressed in an adequate way, then they are given a, another pathway to go down so they can actually, in uh, some hospitals, they all have a slightly different process because they're all very different hospitals, very different structures but in some hospitals they can actually ring a number and they get uh, a rapid response team coming to see their person. And in the evaluation that we've done on the results that have come back, every single person has actually required a bit of extra treatment or transfer to a higher level of care. So it's um, as much as we are, we are good in, as a healthcare provider, we need to listen to the family, we need to listen to the carers because they know that person better than any of us. And that's just another link in the safety net now, which is great. So, so you can see that health literacy is, it is a complex situation, but it doesn't have to be. Um, I think one of the more difficult things is trying to um, get our clinicians on board understanding that it is actually an issue and we do have to, you know, watch the conversations we have with our patients and and listen to what they have to say as well. It is all about them and they need to be very much fully uh, in partnership with us and not just there for the ride. So there's a few challenges ahead in, in trying to empower our uh, communities as well as support our clinicians to, to work in, in that framework as well. So it's not a one-way street. We, we both have responsibilities in that. So I think 
together in partnership, partnering with patients is indeed our, um, one of our major progr programs in patient-based care. And it is a true partnership and it's not just the rhetoric. And I will make that simpler. It's not just about the talking, all right? So I, I'm going to draw that to an end now. I, on this presentation, there's also a couple of links to a few um, uh, resources that might be of assistance to you. But feel free to uh, come into our little website and um, see what you can find on health literacy and, and share, all right? I thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you.